life. And in verse 3 it says, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And that's what I want to preach on, if the foundations be destroyed. And I looked up that those two words. The word foundation means political or moral support. That's what the Strong's Concordance gives a definition. And the word destroyed, it means to pull down, to overthrow, or to ruin. Now, I thought about this, and I just uh, contemplate in this when it says the foundations, if the foundations be destroyed. Now, I, I know that you've seen, uh, uh, they go on television and uh, they'll, they'll, they don't explode, but they implode these big gigantic buildings. They do it from inside. They go inside and they start whacking off the braces and punching holes and making the inside of the building weak so when they detonate those charges of explosives that the building don't blow out but it blows in. And that's what's happening to the church. By way of opening, the church is being destroyed, not from those out there, but from those that profess to be saved, those that profess to be born again, those that uh, go to church and they say the words like Brother Josh about saved and all that, and it don't mean nothing to them. Jesus' blood don't mean nothing to them. The church don't mean nothing to them. Uh, they would, they, if their church uh, dried up and blowed away, they don't care. Why? Because they're just putting on. Uh, the, you know, uh, and I know that I've heard Brother Doug say this, that, that they, a lot of times Jesus would use the word hypocrite. That word hypocrite, it means to jump up on stage. What that means is they're, they're putting on the dog. That's what a lot of church people are doing. They're going to church and they do not care what this book says. Mm, let me say this. I was talking to a guy I work with and I told him that my cousin had died and he said I'm sorry I said well that's why you need to be ready and he started he wasn't laughing as in my face he was like he had a laugh of like how can this be but it can be it can be that you know how you and where you're going to end up when life is over it is a definite thing see it's not only something that's done from within it's an act of insanity when you don't look into this book to find out where you're going to end, that's insane. The living is not the most important thing you're going to do. Dying is. It's insane not to investigate, not to even give it a, a second glance that God, Brother Sammy, can give you hope. Uh, let me say this. It's an act of iniquity. Do you know one of the richest people in the world? Kenneth Copeland. Huh? He's not a millionaire. He's millionaires over and over, 500 and 100 millions of dollars. And he's lying about the gospel. Hmm? Don't get quiet. Hey, stand on the truth. He's lying about the gospel. Because our gospel does not have nothing evidenced by speaking in tongues. Nothing to do with that. Nothing. Mm, there's nothing in the Bible that says when you get saved, you're going to be on a flowery bed of ease. That's a lie from the devil. That's an act of iniquity. To tell you, Brother Ray, you get saved, and if you're not prospering, you're doing something wrong. Tell, tell Brother Job that. Tell Brother Paul that who wrote 13 books of your Bible. Ask him about how he prospered. I heard one preacher said, ask him. He said, well, I can tell you how to get down out of a wall in a basket. Huh? I can tell you how to get left on the roadside dead. I can't tell you about how much what money I got in my wallet because there ain't none. See, that's a pie in the sky that tells people they want numbers. I want to say this. Our society, these preachers are nothing more than spiritual bookies. You know what they're doing? They're playing odds. Well, I got to have a thousand. No, I'd rather have a hundred that know God than nine hundred plus that are going to die and go to hell, and I'm going to have to give an account for them. Uh, just 
just running odds. Nine to uh, ten to one odds. Let me say this in the way of opening. It's done intentionally. They're not doing that by accident. They know good and well. Just like I know what I'm talking about tonight, they know what they're talking about. Uh, they're doing that behind the scenes. <clears throat> they're doing it intentionally. But let me say this. On the good side, there is a day. We all stand before God. And it won't just be me. It'll be Kenneth Copeland and Mr. Mouth down in Texas. Uh, I, I don't apologize. If they got that much nerve to, to attack our Lord and the gospel, I ain't going to apologize. I ain't going to apologize for that. Uh, now, what are the foundations that he's going to talk to? I can't give you all of them. But I'm going to give you some of the key supports of what we believe as children of God. Now, I want to read you a verse. I've wrote all this down because I don't want you turning because I'll be here till in the morning. And I know you don't want to stay that long. <laughs> now, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 9, says, Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gaysayers. That word gaysayer means to deny. What Paul is saying, I'm going to equip Timothy, I'm going to equip these preachers coming up that they can speak against those that deny the gospel, the truth. Now, let me say first of all, right off the bat, in Genesis 1-1, God attacks what this world has attacked in His Word. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You know what they're attacking? How we got here. You might look like a monkey. You might act like a monkey. But I'll guarantee you're not from no monkey. You are created in the very image of God Himself. He's created you. You are unique in your person. You are unique in your personality. You are unique in your ability. Everybody uh, can't play basketball. Uh, amen. I can't dunk no basketballs. If they move to go way down, I still can't do it. That's not the ability God give me. Uh, well, what I'm trying to tell you is, look in the New Testament in Colossians 1.16. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible, invisible, whether they be thrones, dominion, principalities, or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. That's Jesus Christ. Friend, I want to tell you one of the main beams that holds this world up and holds the church up is that we believe that we came from God Himself. And we're going right back to where he, where we started. I'm going back, Brother Brian, to be with God. That's the one who, that's my father. I'm not, I'm not out here, uh, uh, some uh, rolling ball of slime for millions of years. Uh, and it exploded. Even scientists have proven that that theory don't work. Because they likened it like this. I don't know the term. I'm not a scientist. But they say if you take a merry-go-round and you fill every one of those spots with a child and you spin that merry-go-round until all of those children are spun off, they will all be spinning the same direction. How come it is we have two planets that are spinning in reverse order if that's the way we got here by evolution? Huh? Because God created it. In the beginning, God created. One of the foundations is this book I hold in my hand. The Word of God. Let me say this about the Bible. It don't never change. That's why they fight against it. Uh, that's why you have the NIV and all these other Vs. Uh, amen. Uh, because I... I got saved, Brother Sammy. The preacher, Brother Hayes was his name. He was using uh, King James. And if that'll get him to heaven, I think it'll get me there too. Uh, I ain't changing. Why? Because the Bible says, The words of the Lord are pure words, 
as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Listen to what First Peter says in one twenty three: Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Let me say this to you, my friend. This Bible right here is powerful. It says it's sharper than a two-edged sword. It cuts a going in. It cuts a coming out. It cuts a going up. It cuts a going down. Why? Because it'll even get to the joints and the marrow. It gets right in, in the bone. The Bible does. That's why I was, uh, when Brother Josh was talking about his uh, message this morning, I thought, man, that, that was good, but it kind of stepped on my toes. I was telling him tonight, uh, I, I want to give you this information. Uh, if you know how to starve a, wealth, a welfare recipient, hide his welfare check in his work boots. You'll get it. Uh, <laughs> Amen. The Word of God. Did you know, have you, I'm sure you've seen this, when Jonah run from God he said for the word of God came into Jonah go to Nineveh but he ran alright alright now Jonah's in the now he's in the belly of the well and he said in the word of the Lord came into Jonah again that's twice and next, you know what he said go unto Nineveh it don't change when it comes to, you know, the Word of God for you is the same today. You get up in the morning and say, God, have you changed your mind? No, He hasn't changed His mind. This book will be this. If we're around a thousand years from now, this King James Bible will be reading just like it is today. Why? Because it's the foundations on which we build our lives on. The Bible. Listen, to salvation. It's so messed up nowadays, you can come any way. Uh, they're even accepting you can come, you can come by Allah. I don't think so. We're not the same. The difference between what we believe and what Buddhists believe and what all those others believe is that it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. That See, God gets the glory in this salvation, but in this salvation that the, the church is, is breathing out, man gets that. Huh? My wife, this has been 25 years ago, she had went, uh, we had invited a neighbor to go to church with us to a revival, and her and her kids went. But I was working second shift, so she had asked as a, you know, for Rhonda to go. And this is what the, the pastor said for an invitation. He stepped down here and he said, if you want to be saved, come and shake the preacher's hand. No truth. There's no magic potion in a preacher's hand. Amen. I think Sidney preached a good message right there about salvation. Conviction. You know, conversion without conviction. Somebody's got to be stirred. You know, that's why he likens the second birth to the, you know, to, to being born, period. Everybody's here. You've got here the same way. There's no Maria. But Josh didn't get to come. He he was born just like everybody else. And every other baby that's going to be born be born the same way. That's the way it is to get to heaven. For by grace, see, God wants you there, but He does not want you there and getting glory for it. When you walk up into heaven, when you sit down on that street of gold, you know what you're going to be saying, brother Warre? Thank God for Jesus. Praise God for the Word of God that was preached. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself is a gift of work, a gift of God, not of works. You know what he goes on? In verse 10 he says, For we are his workmanship created unto good works. You know what? God wants you to do right. Huh? He wants you to act right. He wants you to, uh, when you, you know, when you, I'm going to deal with this uh, uh, subject that most people don't talk about is separation. I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Not too long because it might get run off. But I'm just trying to tell you, these are, these are the mainstays. These are the foundations on what we build. That's why the church is falling apart. Because people, they're wanting numbers so bad that they, would, they, they don't care about where the eternal uh, future of these people lie. And it makes me believe that they are not saved themselves. Because I don't want nobody to be misled and end up in hell. 
Do you know what? A lot of preachers do not know this, that God is a triune being. That is the mainstay of this book. Because when Jesus gave out the great commandment, He said, listen to this in Matthew, He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You know what He said? There's three of me. But there's one. I can't tell you how to believe that. I just believe it like I do. Believe it by faith. You know? See, here's how I see it. In salvation, God the Father, He planned it. God the Son, He purchased it. But God the Holy Spirit, He preserves it. You're kept by the power of God through the Spirit of God. You know, you're not keeping yourself. Uh, huh? No, no. You say, well, I made a choice to be here tonight. That's the Holy Spirit. Huh? Huh? He puts in your heart. Uh, we, a lot of times we try to take credit for that, but it's not us. We, there's nothing about us that would do good. It's the Holy Ghost inside of us, that part of the Trinity that pokes us and prods us and tells us. Uh, about the Word of God. You know, I, you know if you're not a preacher, you, you don't understand this, but you, you can read a verse for five years. And then on that, on the, in that fifth year, God say, this is what that means. And you're trying, you know what that is? That's inspired. God inspires through the Holy Ghost for you. Brother Doug gets up here and preaches a message. That ain't from him. I know he's well educated. I know he's highly intelligent. But intelligence don't have nothing to do with what we're doing here. Uh, it's the Holy Spirit. It's the three in one God that is being existing in your life. And it's a shame that people are pastoring churches that don't know that God is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Uh, what are they doing in their spare time? Are they getting their messages off of some kind of website? Don't they read their Bible? Uh, li listen to this one of the key things that makes us different in what we believe is our separation issues it says wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate saith the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you God's telling us we don't need to be yoked up with that crowd out there you know, people don't go to hell for drinking liquor. They don't go to hell for cussing. They don't go to hell for whoremonging. They go to hell for unbelief. One sin. Hmm? But I want to tell you why God says when you get saved, you stop doing that. Not for your sake, for their sake. Uh, people can look at you and say, there's something different about Him. Hmm? When you don't, carry on like they do all the people that I work with that know me know I don't carry on with them I don't go the places they go I don't even go some of the restaurants they go uh, I'm not going there why? because God told me to be different I'm not telling you what to do but I'm telling you this that's why we're living in a society brother Josh I'd, I was forced twice this week to go to Walmart Oh, I tell you, you almost have to repent when you come out of there. Because when you see these people, you're thinking they're just coming from a, a slumber party. And I'm thinking, what has happened to the conduct and character of our nation? You're coming to church, you're coming to, you're, you're coming to do your shopping, and you still got your jammies on. What's wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Have you been touched in the head? That you, you know, our country, our moral fiber is gone. Uh, let me say this. In the job that I have, I have met a lot of people. Very common. Very common. To find a girl about 30 years old that have three to four kids with three to four dads. very common now see I don't I'm not I don't want to be too harsh on them but I want to be the, this fact there's something wrong with all the birth control that you can have take some 
Right? Amen. You know, we're, we're, we're supposed to be different than the world. When the world looks at us, not because we're great, but because the God we serve is great. I'm not trying to boast on us, you know, you know, you can wear a suit. The mafia, they wear suits. That don't got nothing to do with that. Right. Said, so, you see my English? Eastern Kentucky, they don't got. <laughs> see, here, we need to learn what we believe to be separated. I'd never, you know, people that, a person that works at the bank, that wears a suit will go to the same hell that a biker will go to that's wearing leather jackets and tattoos. Got nothing to do with that. Uh, but I want to tell you something. If you're coming to church, you ought to wear decent clothes. That's all I'm saying. Decent. Hmm? That ought to be decent. If you're born again. I, I'm not talking. If you're here, you come in leather, leather pants and you're lost, I'm, I'm, I don't care. Just I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to keep coming. You're welcome here. But I want to say, if you profess to be saved, you need to come out from among that bunch. You know, what do you believe? Uh, one of the key things is what we believe about the devil. What do you believe about him? Some people think he's a force, a force to be reckoned with. He's not no force. He's a person. I know I've run into him this week. He's been hanging around my house quite often, I think. Now listen to what the Bible says. We know what it says in Job about him. It says in 1 Peter, says, be sober. That means a sound mind. Be vigilant. You need to be watching. You need to be on guard. Huh? Because your adversary, your enemy, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Let me say this to you, friend. He's after you. Do you know he hates you? He hates you. And he hates you. And he hates you, and he hates you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to follow you around and make your life a living misery. That's why you need to be sober, you need to have a sound mind, and you need to say what the Bible says, get behind me, Satan. Uh, you need to know who's roaming around in your house and tell him to get out. He's a real person. He's not, some, uh, he's not some ghost that's floating around. He's walking around. The Bible says, God said, where you, where you been? He said, I've been walking to and fro. He just roams around the world seeing who he can destroy, who he can kill and take to hell because he knows he's going. The devil and the church don't even act like he exists, just like they don't think hell exists. I want to say this, hell is as real today as it was when Jesus talked about it in the, in the, in the New Testament. Uh, when he talked about hell I want to say this the church I was listening to a preacher one time he said after the service this lady come up to him and said pastor I want to ask you a question he said go ahead hell what has happened to hell he said what do you mean he said has it went out of business he said no I don't. she said nobody talks about it anymore Nobody informs anybody about it anymore. Hell is just a word. But I want to say the Bible teaches about hell. It's the most horrible place you could ever think. Matter of fact, Brother Sammy, the Bible says it, hell is so bad that you literally be better off to pluck your own eye out than to go there. Can you imagine the horror? To cut your own arm off. Hell is real. Hell is a real place. And my friend, that's where your families are going that's lost. That's where my family is going. That's where the devil is going. But I want to say this on the term, we believe in a place called heaven, a street of gold, walls of jasper, gates of pearl. We believe in that place. It, just on the same coin, hell is as bad as it can get, but heaven is as great as it can get. And our belief is that, is that we believe that heaven is a wonderful place. It's a place where we <coughs> sometimes we get caught up in the place itself and forget about the person. That person named Jesus. You know, heaven wouldn't be heaven if Jesus wasn't there. See, I want to try to tell you the Bible, one of the things that we believe, and you know they're watering it down. We've got a church probably right up the street here that's watering it down. Don't tell you, say too much about hell. Don't say too much about heaven. We just stand somewhere like, you know, like, be like the Jehovah Witness. We want to inherit the earth. Well, go ahead and help yourself. I'd rather go to heaven. 
I've been here 65 years almost, uh, and it ain't getting no better. <laughs> Matter of fact, it's getting worse. <laughs> so I'm ready to go someplace where the, the walls are jasper. Well, listen to this. It says, Bible, then nobody don't hardly ever teach about this. It talks about justification. Do you know that almost every main doctrine in the Bible links back to two things, the blood of Jesus and faith? Listen to what it says in Romans 5. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's His blood. That's what that's talking about. You know, I'm going to make it. And I'm going to make it because I'm justified. That's a lawyer's term, something I don't know nothing about. But I know this. I, don't, I can't feel justification, but I can feel salvation. Uh, justification is checked off up in heaven. Salvation is checked off down on earth. Uh, amen. I'm not special in your eyes, but in God's eyes. Uh, and I'm more important. I'm more thinking what He thinks than what everybody else thinks. Uh, you know, here's another thing they knock is the virgin birth. Uh, you know, they 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 talk about you know knowing you know He didn't have to come that way. Yes, He did. Yes, He did. He did have to come that way. See, because if Joseph would have been his father, he would have been a sinner just like the rest, and he would have needed a savior. And in Isaiah, he talks about there's going to come a day when a virgin shall give birth. And then it comes forth in over in the Matthew chapter 1. You know, behold, a virgin shall give, be with child. It's a miracle. Amen. That's a, that is what we put our hope in, is that God was conceived in the womb of a woman, and she gave birth, and he died on the cross of Calvary, and on the third day he rose again. Listen to this. Another thing that we put our trust in is the blood. You know, the blood of Christ. It says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. You know what? The blood of Christ that cleanses us from all our sins. He washed us in the book of Revelation. He washed us in His own blood. I think that was, that's a mighty strange way to wash something. But it works for God. And that's the one who has to be satisfied is the one... God, He has to be satisfied, and He won't accept nothing but the blood. You know, and the, and the reason for that is there's so many people trying to come a different way. They're trying to come through this thing back here. They want they they all talk about being baptized. I've been baptized. I, so what? Uh, that that's all right. But that ain't important. You need to be born again. You need the blood of Christ applied to your life. So you know, uh, Jimmy Swaggart and all that crowd. They uh, uh, they they talk about the you know how to be evidenced of your salvation is that you you speak in tongues. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't like that plan because I've got too many problems with my tongue. I say too many things I shouldn't say. Amen. There's no evidence that that ain't evidence. Uh, you speaking in tongues, a bunch of mumbo jumbo that somebody uh, can't understand. But I'm trying to tell you, this is being this this blood of our Savior. It's been weakened down and watered down uh, because they put no emphasis on it. But I want to say this: that God accepts nothing but the blood. Uh, Nothing but the blood of Jesus can wash your sins away and make you white as snow. I'm trying to tell you, praise God for His blood that run down His face, down His beard, down His body. He was the one who paid the price for me to be here tonight. I've done absolutely nothing to be here, but it's the grace of God through the blood of Calvary who made me white and made me who I am. Let me say this. The resurrection. See, and, and I want to say this because the reason I'm just going to hit on this just for a minute is because there's so many people, Jesus died for me. I, I know that. But he got up again. Uh, I, a friend of mine that was a preacher, uh, he had went to the Holy Land and said that they had went over there to the tomb, supposedly. I don't know. I wasn't here when Jesus was here, so I don't know. But they say that's the tomb. And they said they walked over to the tomb and they stuck their head in and said there was a, a Church of God preacher. He said, well, praise God, just like I thought. Nobody home. Uh, Buddha, he's still at home. Uh, Muhammad, he's still home. 
All those gods that they've made gods that is no God is still home. But the tomb of our Savior is empty. Why? Because if, if there be no resurrection, Christ died in vain and you are still in your sin. You're hell bound and nothing you can do about it. But thank God that my Savior not only died for me, but he got up the third day and he's seated at the right hand of God and ever liveth to make intercession for me. Praise his name tonight. Thank God for a Savior like that. Amen. Amen. You know, another thing, and I'm, not, I'm just hit on it before I do this last little thing here, is the second coming. They, a lot of people say, well, you know, I don't think he's coming because it's been so long. Well, he's, he's got a day. He's coming. And, and you know, when people, when they scoff, that's a more sign, Brother Sammy, that he's coming. Because he said scoffers will come, and they'll say, where is the Lord? Where is his coming? But I have one more question I want to answer, and then I'll, I'll sit down. It says, what can the righteous do? What can the righteous do? If you know these foundations, these truths, fundamental truths of the Bible, well, I want to say this, with a world that's falling down around you, just keep trusting God. That's the best thing you can do. Don't look at the political parties, Republican or Democrat, they're all wicked. Uh, don't even look at some of the church leaders. They're almost as wicked, if not worse. Take this book, read it every day, get the truth of this one. Trust God. You have to walk almost on water to believe Him. Keep trusting Him. But we're living in a society that don't know how to trust Him. Can God be trusted? He can be. Let me say this. Another thing that the righteous can do is we can keep talking and telling about Him. He's the only thing worth talking about. All of the stuff that we talk about, and I, I, I know we all have hobbies and this and that, and that's all right, I'm not talking about. But really, when it all, when the rubber meets the road, the only thing that's going to matter is what you talk about Him about. What is else worth talking about? Jesus. Jesus done everything that we've ever needed he's provided us with clothes with homes with spouses he's answered prayers big prayers little prayers all kinds of prayers he's comforted us he's really the only thing worth talking about I, I see so many people there we're living in a sports crazed society and they're trying to figure out who the greatest of all time is let me say just pull up close here his name is Jesus he's never played NBA He's never played in a national basketball or baseball or football. He's never played there. Because if he did, he'd only need himself. He wouldn't need another team member. Huh? He'd be three-pointing it all the way down on the other end. He wouldn't need nobody. Only thing worth talking about, really. And I'm not saying don't, don't, don't talk about those other things. I'm just saying it ain't worth talking about, really. Let me say this, thirdly. Keep thirsting after this. What can you do? Get thirsty for the Word of God. Because this right here will lead you through troubled times. I want to tell you why my, my world didn't fall down Monday. It's because of this right here. What I know about this. What I know about this. I know it. Let me say this. Another thing you need to do, and you listen to this before you... You need to keep holding to godly traditions. You know what I mean by that? The old paths. Don't accept all this new stuff coming down the pike. All these uh, kind of look at like a bunch of college kids sitting out at uh, around the campfire with head uh, bands on singing kumbaya. Don't don't get a hold of that. That's not it. Uh, let me say this to you folks. A lot of times, God don't let it get on because we need to learn. Brother Doug needs time to teach us. You know what I'm saying? That's why God says, I'm not going to let it get on today because they need to learn something. All these people living on emotional experiences, 
I mean, you ain't going to you ain't going to run very long on that. It's kind of like eating Japanese uh, Chinese food. You can get full on it, but it won't stay with you long. I know. I've tried it. My wife hates it. I guess her and brother Doug are on one thing they agree on is Chinese food. Now, another thing the righteous can do, be thankful. Be thankful. You can be thankful for what God does for you. Let me say this. We have sometimes the thought that we deserve better than what we have. But I want to say this to you. We deserve worse. We don't deserve it this good. We don't deserve a good church to come to. But you know what? There's a lot of people that don't know what we know. The Bible says it's blessed are they that hear. Blessed are they that see. You know what you're hearing today? You're hearing the truth. Not because I'm something, but because of this God I'm talking about. Let me say this, last of all, in closing. You need to keep giving your treasures to God. Invest in His work. Because I want to tell you something. Your 401k, I don't know if you've noticed this, uh, but uh, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you something there that the government is wanting to do. They're wanting to be able to take your Social Security and they're wanting to take your 401k. So if you're putting your trust in that, you'll have an empty basket because the government's wicked. So I'm going to try to tell you if the foundations be destroyed. Brother Josh, you... Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.